One of the techniques that I use to improve my production skills is to back engineer tunes that I admire, like Left Field's 1993 dance floor banger, Open Up. I love the driving beat and its bouncy interplay with the bass, so I figured I'd have a go at recreating them as accurately as possible. Who Sampled is a great place to discover where a tune's samples came from. In the case of Open Up, we can see that the beat has samples from Stetsasonic's 1988 song Talking All That Jazz and the ubiquitous Amen break. We can learn what gear Leftfield used during this period from research online. Gearspace is a goldmine for this sort of info. The drums were programmed on Akai S-series samplers, including the S1000 and on a Roland TR909. Let's start by sampling the Stetsasonic break from vinyl, in much the same way Leftfield would have done back in 1993. The 12 inch includes an instrumental mix, which should allow us to get a nice clean loop of the break without any vocals over the top. The verse section is almost certainly where Leftfield would have sampled this break from. I don't have an S1000 sampler, but I do have the S1100, which is basically the same. Having trimmed the sample, we need to pitch it up to get it to the right tempo. Stetsasonic's Talking All That Jazz has a tempo of 108 BPM, and Open Up I calculated to have a tempo of 124.9. So we need to pitch up the sample by 2.52 to get it to the right tempo. The left field sample is just half a bar looped over and over. I've EQ'd most of the bass out of the loop to get it sounding similar to the left field sample. I realized something was missing. The left field sample had more of an attack to it, which I figured out had been caused by an imperfectly timed loop, resulting in a clip at the end of each half bar. I'd already printed the audio and didn't want to faff around setting the Akai up again, so I spoofed the effect by layering a rimshot sample over the start of every half bar. It's subtle, but it makes it sound closer to the original. Next up, I had to figure out what was going on with the hi-hats. By listening to different mixes of the tune, I was able to approximate the hi-hat patterns. There are two patterns using a combination of open and closed hi-hat samples. Followed by a 16 note closed hi-hat pattern coming from the 909. There's some delay across these hi-hat patterns, so I've emulated that using Waves' H delay. Next challenge was the kick. It sounds like a 909 kick that's been heavily processed. I spent a while tuning it and got these settings which I was relatively happy with. A lot of EQing was required to get the kick sounding punchy, and also to remove the sub-frequencies that will be filled in by the bass later. Next up's the crash, which is also from the TR909. I tuned it to match the original as best I could, then put some reverb on it to give it that long tail. Now it was time for me to turn my attention to the bass. I originally thought the bass was the sine wave from the Akai sampler, which was used by Leftfield on the track Storm 3000. But after listening more, I realised a 303 was used. I started with the 303 line and got these settings, which I was relatively happy with. Again, a lot of EQing was required to match the original. Something was still missing, and I figured the Akai sine wave was probably layered on top of the 303 line. It's worth noting that neither the 303 line or the sine wave play directly on the downbeat. They're actually slightly behind the beat, which is what gives the tune that bouncy feel. Let's get the Amen break in there. Again sampled from vinyl. Notice it's only the last half of the Amen break that gets played in the first part of the tune. Towards the end of the tune, it gets played in full. To finish out the beat, there's a couple of 909 snare rolls. Having tuned the 909 snare to match the original track, I first created this little two tap that comes in just before a crash. And then there's a classic one bar snare roll.
I had a go at recreating the distorted guitar sound you hear throughout the track. I did this by taking a sample from a sample pack that was available in the early 90s, but I don't think it's the same sample that was used by Leftfield. The guitar sound in the original track has a ping pong delay. I emulated this using H delay from Waves, with no feedback and about 12% mix. The sample itself was loaded into Studio One's built-in sample player. I had a go at creating some of the other sounds from the tune, but with limited success. But it was fun playing around and experimenting. Then I built out the track, matching it to the album version. In addition to the snare rolls mentioned earlier, you can see some of the variations that Leftfield used. Like dropping the final kick on a bar, or just dropping the bass. I haven't tried emulating all the percussion, because I assume that was mostly played live by Neil Barnes, who is a percussionist. But I did program the variation at the end, where we get the full arm end break. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments if you'd like to hear more back engineering of classic dance tracks.